We need to find a way how to live our life. Everyone needs to find a way how to live his life and how to feel that he's alive during that time that we spend in prison, in this world. Because this world is prison for all of us. The meaning of the holy world word olam, that it means world, in the holy language, in Hebrew, in Lashon HaKodesh, it's that the world is blocking our eyes from seeing the light of Hashem. The word olam means he'elem. It's coming from the word, word he'elem. He'elem means something that is hidden. The world is physical and it's blocking the light of the Creator from us. That's actually what the Hashem done when He created the world. Because before of the creation, it was all eternity, infinity, endless. Only endless light of the Creator's being Himself. That's what that was. And then, in one day, in one there, there was no, it was beyond time, before of time, in a certain point inside eternity, the Creator wanted to reveal His kindness, to reveal His mercy. And there was no one over there to reveal His mercy on. Who to give? There was no one. There were no creations. There was nothing. It was all one, all Him. So, He decided to create the world. And then what he did, he found a point in the center of the endless, something that's already impossible for you intelligent guys, you can understand there is no center to infinity. But he found he can do things that are beyond our ability to understand. And he found a central point to infinity and from that point, he moved himself in a circle to the sides. That's what he did. He created an empty circle. And inside that emptiness, inside that space, he created the worlds. Everything that we know of and much more than we're aware of. All of the galaxies, all of the space, all of... And, and beyond. Inside that empty space. So, no matter how high we're going to find, no matter how, what we're going to reach, we're going to reach only His creation. And beyond that, we cannot reach. So, this is why we cannot even understand who He really is, because He only dresses Himself and covers Himself inside of the creation. But the real Him, the real Creator, the ends of Baruch Hu, is is not here to meet, to see, to find. Over here in this world, when he is revealing himself, he is revealing himself through coverings. He is inside people, he is inside books, he is inside coincidence, things that happen in the world, in the weather, in, in nature. He is inside every particle of the creation. He is putting himself, dressing, covering himself, inside of the creation. So what is the creation, actually? The coverings of the Creator. Only coverings. You cannot reach Him. No matter what you're gonna do to reach Him physically, to hold Him, you cannot. You're gonna hold Him through a cup, through a bottle. You're gonna, okay, water, okay. Try to hold the water, He's inside the water. Try to separate the water to, to atoms, there is another layer. There is an inner layer, inner deeper layer and he's over there and, he, and no matter what they're gonna find they're gonna be another layer because he's endless and if he decided to hide himself there's nothing you can do to find him unless he will decide to reveal himself to you that's a huge compliment to every one of us every single one of us because if you heard about him if you felt him even once if you have any connection to him, it's only because that he is revealing himself to you. He chose you 
and decided to give you that opportunity to open, to remove some curtains, to remove some coverings, and to let you feel more and more from His Holy Presence. That's it, because He decided. When Hashem Barach said to Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm going to hide my face from them, there was nothing to do. And Moshe Rabbeinu, he had a complaint on Hashem. He was arguing, fighting with Hashem. And he told Hashem, why are you upset with them? Why are you angry at them? You turned their heart away from you. You made them not believe in you. All of those people that you will see that they don't have faith, that they couldn't care less about Hashem, don't blame them. They cannot see what the Hashem Barach is hiding from them. It's like a little child that cannot see on the top shelf what did you put, and he will never be aware to that top shelf until he'll reach that. But if you will keep on hiding it from him, he will never find it. The only reason that we can see Hashem, it's because that Hashem Barach decided to reveal himself to us. How is revealing himself to us? He, is, he removes those masks, those coverings, those outfits that he's wearing. Slowly, slowly, one layer after the other. And the reason that we cannot see him completely, that we cannot understand things in the speed that we desire to see, why I can't have this, why I can't have that, why I can't, haven't achieved that yet, why, uh, why I'm not doing this, why I cannot see Hashem, why Hashem is not answering my prayers now, why it didn't happen yet. All of those questions are coming from lack of understanding that the creation, the reason for the creation is that the Creator wanted to reveal His mercy. He wanted to reveal His mercy, so He covered His light in coverings that we will have the ability to enjoy from His light. Go back to that ancient explanation that I just explained to you. The way of the Creator to give from His glory, from His beauty, from His mercy, from His kindness, from His love, from His good, from His truth, is become an option and becomes available, available can happen only when there is separation between us to Him. Because before that He blocked our eyes from being one with Him, we could not receive anything from Him because we were Him. Because it was all one. It was the sea of souls. It was Him. It was unity. There was nothing there. Everything was there, but we could not enjoy it. If now you'll have everything, you won't enjoy it. Only when you're thirsty, you can appreciate water. Only when you have a lacking, when that cup is empty, and now someone will fill it, come on, fill it, and for two hours, and, and then someone will put water, then you'll feel the taste of the water, how cold and fresh they are, how useful they are, enjoyable they are, go, doing good for your body, giving you energy, helps you. But before that you were thirsty, water. Okay, who needs it? So I have water. When I'm not thirsty, I couldn't care less about the water. That's the mercy and the kindness of Hashem, that He made us with a certain lacking block, that we cannot see the light, that we cannot feel the light, that we cannot experience the, the, the beauty and the good of Hashem. And then from that point and on, we are ready, we became vessels that are ready to receive his kindness, to enjoy from His beauty. That's the power of Hashem. Does that That's, mean that when they had the base of Migdash, they didn't feel thirst only in Gullahs, really? That what? That when they were in the desert, or when we had the base of Migdash, the Jews didn't feel the first, and in Gullahs you only feel the first when you don't see revealed Godliness anymore? Exactly, exactly. And we're desiring that Hashem will reveal His kindness on us into our vessels, because now if you're thirsty and someone will push you to the pool, you won't thank him for that. You want your water in a cup, in the amount that you want, in the temperature that you will enjoy from it. If someone will give you boiling water, now I'm thirsty, boiling water, that's not what you need. But it's maybe higher, it may be bigger amounts, it's not what I need. 
Okay, you want to get married and someone will bring you someone that she's a genius and she's so intelligent and she's a supermodel and super righteous and like something, she, she's invisible. I, okay, what are you going to do with them? It's not in your vessels. You need someone that's going to relate to you. You need someone that can talk to you, someone that will understand your nonsense, that's going to laugh from your silly jokes. You need someone that will be able to stand you, to love you, to care about you, someone that will be in your height, that will be in your measure, that will be in your level. If not, okay, so she's, she is amazing, yeah, but she's not my wife. She's great, she's the best, but she's not my wife, so what's the connection? You need to receive the light of Hashem in midot, in measurements. So for that, we need to have avodat midot to work on our midot, on our attributes, on our measurements, to know exactly how much we need to love and what to love and what not to love, and how much we're allowed to be angry and how much we're not allowed to be angry, how much we're allowed to jealous for Hashem and which jealousy is not for Hashem Barach anymore. And how much we need, how many hours we need to put into Avodat Hashem every day, and how many hours we need to put for our body, for our friends, for our family, for our hobbies, for our career. You need to put measurements, you need to put things into the constrictions of life, into that system that the Creator created. Just, you need not to forget Him inside that crazy metric. You must remember that it's him running the show, even though that it's a great show, that there is a show goes on. You need to wake up in a certain time in the clock, in, in, in the time in, in the world, and you need to check. Is it by the Shulchan Aruch? Okay, great. The Shulchan Aruch ideally is saying the book of rules of Judaism. First of all, he tells you that Shacharit, it's in the Netzach Hama. That's when Shacharit, in sunrise, that's when you need to stay in Shmona Esra. Ideally, every Jewish person and every person that wants to join him and to pray to the Creator in the morning needs to stand and to say prayer of Shmona Esra, the 18 brachot, in the time, the moment of sunrise. You know how early it is? And you know how, earlier, how much earlier you need to wake up to prepare yourself to that time? That in that time you will be ready already with your tefillin, in the synagogue, in the Bet Knesset, with the talit and everything. And people are going to the mikveh and saying, Birkot HaTawa, Birkot HaShachar. You had to say, Tikkun Chatzot, okay, so great, yes, it's written. Amazing book, Shulchan Aruch. But I need to check my vessels, my ability. Will that battery gonna keep on working if I'm gonna keep on using it without charging it enough hours? Two hours of sleep, it's enough to charge my battery? My battery doesn't work on two hours. Okay, so four hours, maybe that's enough? Sorry, I'm falling at five, at six already, so I cannot because... I still have things that I need to do at 5, at 6, at 7. I need to be awake until 10, until 11, sometimes 12 and 1, sometimes, most of the nights, until 3. So, can I wake up next if I must stay awake until 3? It lives with me with 2 hours, 1 hour and a half. I'm not able to do that. So I need to ask Hashem, what do you want from me? What in the world do you want from me? You want me to believe in you? And you want me to understand that you are greater than how that I think that you are. That you're much greater than how that I estimate you. That you're really with me, even if I'm not fulfilling my obligation, corresponding to my way of of, of Avodat Hashem, to my assumption of how a Jew, a person, needs to serve Hashem. Only when you realize that the Creator is 100% with you and that He understands you and that He cares about you and that He loves you, you can see through all of those curtains. Because when you want to know Hashem, when you want to see Hashem, when you want to feel the love of Hashem, you need to look beyond all of those curtains. And the, the, the closest layers to Him is to keep Torah and Mitzvot fully, completely. That you keep all of the mitzvot, all of the obligations of the Shulchan Aruch from A to Z, from the first one till the last one. That's the closest that you can get. But 
It's still the coverings of Hashem is Barach. There is something that is even deeper than that. And that's the intention of your heart. That's the purity of your heart. That's your thought. That's your faith. That's your belief. That you believe that Hashem is Barach is with you beyond all kinds of constrictions, all kinds of obligations, all kinds of testaments, all kinds of, of, of verses, all opinions that He is beyond, that He is with you more than you think, more than you can hold, more than you can understand, more than you can feel. What's He's, the source of what you're saying? Look, I took a lot of drugs, so it's very hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I mean, look at Samara. It's probably a mix of a different thing, no? So, like. I'll tell you. First of, <laughs> first part that I explained on the creation. <laughs> no, 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 that I know. I'm saying this that you know. last few words. Okay, what? Not last about Malcolm few... Hollow and Coven Simpson. I'm talking about the last few words about this so, relationship that overarches whether you're listening to God or not. So, that concept. I'll tell you. It's, it's the verse is saying, Ki pi Hashem diber alechem. The mouth of Hashem was talking to you. And Rabbi Nachman of Breslev is saying that a person, he's got the power of speech and where he is receiving the power of speech. Power of speech is the gift that the Creator gave to human beings, to the ones that have His shape, to the ones that receive the Holy Soul, that's Him. So now, when we are talking, and when we are talking, when I say when we are talking, I mean when we are talking while being connected to Him, so then the power of speech reveals the Divine Spirit of the Creator, that through that Divine Spirit, with, by using that Divine Spirit, He created the world. So, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev in Likutei Moran explains that when a person is connecting himself to Hashem Barach, to Father in Heaven, and he opens his mouth, so, Ptach Picha, you open your mouth, Ve'ya'iru devarecha amirim. The illuminating words will shine, will come out from your mouth. So that wisdom, those words are words of the light of my soul. It's the light of my neshama that is shining and coming out through my mouth to you. And that source is the source of my being. That's who that I am. So... I hope I answered your question. No. Now I'll tell you something. It's not from no book. It's Sefer Katav Ish Rivi. The verse is saying that my enemy, he wrote the book of my life, the story of my life. The story of King David been written by his enemies. Oh, he ran to the desert of Judah. He ran to hide in the cave. Why? Because of Avshalom, because of Shim Ibn Gerah. They wrote his book. They wrote his novel. So, my enemies brought me to this table today to tell you my heart and to read for you, for all of us, between the lines. The verse is saying, that even though that I'm black, I'm still beautiful. Even though that I'm dark, I'm still beautiful. And the meaning of that verse is, to, is going on the letters. That the letters of the Torah they are dark from one side, but if you look on the other side, they are 100% connected to the blank page, to the paper, to the scroll of the Bible, of the Torah itself. And the Torah is dark fire that is written on white fire. The dark fire is the dark letters of the Torah, and the brighter, the light, white light fire that's the fire of, of that, that. That is the blank paper, the, the page, the scroll of, of the Torah. So now, the holy Torah that we read, even though that there are six hundred thousand letters and many many books that have been written and printed and by righteous people, it's still limited. Even though that it's very very deep, it's still limited. But the light of the white page the white fire of the Torah, that's the potential, that's the endless Torah, that's the real source of what is written in the, in the Torah. So the white fire, that's the fire of our soul. The black fire is the external fire. You as a person, everyone as a person, 
when you walk in life, you have those two aspects. One is the external Torah, the one that you read, the one that you saw, the one that you received, the one that you've been taught by rabbis, by righteous people. It can be very awesome Torah, but it will always going to be an external Torah. It's Torah that came from the outside into your ears, into your eyes, into your inside. But you have a higher Torah than that, and that's the Torah that is shining from inside. That's the wisdom of your soul, that when a person is cleaning himself, and Hashem helped me and cleaned me, I didn't clean myself, I'm advising you to try to clean yourself, but it didn't work for me. No matter how many times I jumped to the washing machine and, I, and nothing helped, I had periods of time that I was not going to sleep, and I was learning standing on my feet and not sitting. And for one year and a half or something like that, I was not sleeping in a bed, and I was always going to sleep like that on the table, not going to sleep, just learning and falling on the book. And I was fasting, and I did 40 days, 6 hours in Bodhidut for 3 times in my life. 6, six hours every day for 40 days straight, three times in my life and I woke up Chatzot and I've been to Uman many 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 times and I was rolling in the snow and I went to Mikveh and I did all of the crazy things that you can imagine and I promise to you that it did not help me a bit <laughs> to come closer to Hashem. I, I can swear I can swear that's not the right way and I had to be stupid enough to think that that will be the right way but then after you go Hashem is kind enough and he's rerouting you you okay you yes. you made a wrong turn we decided now, that those are things that a person should try should to do. do yeah so there are many many We're righteous people insulted. I'll tell it's you I'll righteous. tell you those are not mistakes in Abu Dhabi no, I'm not challenging it I'm just asking you uh, no I'm great I'm, I'll just explain to you that other people will not will not mistake to think that I'm saying that those things are wrong things to do no there's amazing things to do all of them are amazing things and I also thought that they're amazing. This is why I tried you're them. You didn't help you. I'll tell you why. Because Extreme. if you now going to hear that a certain righteous man, when he came to Shul, you're going to read it in a book on a righteous man. Let's say a Baal Shem Tov. Yes, he came to Shul one night to Daven Mairiv. And when he came to Shul, to the synagogue, he, there was like fire. He was a flame of fire. And he made circles in the Shul. And he touched the walls. And he moved the benches. And he touched and opened books and closed the books. So now I'm asking you, is there any reason in the world that in the next time that you will go to shul, to synagogue, you will start circling the synagogue and move the benches and act crazy? The answer is obviously no. I do sometimes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why you're doing it sometimes. If you, if you feel, if you feel that that is your point, in Avodat Hashem, you feel no, that the ADD. Okay. <laughs> Every person needs to find himself. The Baal Shem Tov made those circles. He oh, moved, the, removed, moved the books and touched the, 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 the walls because he felt something. When you come to shul, one time you want to pray in front of the Sefer Torah, one time you want to stand in the corner, one time you want to sit, one time you feel like standing, one time you feel like you want to pray home, one time you feel to pray with the Siddur, one time you feel like to call Hashem and to, to, to cry to Him and just to talk to Him like you should talk to your best friend. So the Baal Shem Tov revealed His, the light of His soul every time that He done something. And his students and people that saw him and been impressed by him, they wrote those stories. And maybe many righteous people also wrote what that they felt that helped them to come closer to Hashem. So Rabbi Yosef Karo was doing something, and Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai was doing something else, and Abraham was doing this, and Yitzchak was doing that, and every one of those righteous people were kind and generous enough also to open our eyes of of, of, of 
of to have a vision, to have a dream, to understand that you can create in Avodat Hashem, that you should become yourself in Avodat Hashem. One was the Balatanya. It doesn't mean that you can be or supposed to be the Balatanya. Actually, there's no connection. You should be inspired by the Balatanya to be who that you are, like the, the Balatanya became himself, achieved, found the source of his being. If you're going to imitate the Lubavitcher Rebbe and going to wear his hat like that he was wearing his hat, it's not going to bring you to the places that he achieved by wearing his hat like that. Because he did it in his own way. That was the way that he felt that he will be more connected to Hashem. So he's actually teaching you that you also need to find your way to connect yourself to Hashem. And one will do it through mikveh, and one will do that mikveh in freezing cold water, and one will do it in warm water, and one will do it every Friday, and one will do it every morning, and one will do it at midnight, and one will do it only in the eve before of Yom Kippur. Great! Everyone will try to feel his connection to Hashem and to connect himself to the Creator through the Torah and Mitzvot. Just to keep the Torah and Mitzvot like donkey, like an animal, that's not the right way. Hashem is rebuking us and saying, I'm upset because you were serving me while you were not happy. You were serving me, but you were not happy. It wasn't satisfying you. You, you didn't feel. Do it? No. Make it clean. I'm you just saying. I don't do say it. that. I didn't say that. Where you where how, where you read that? You're saying that only. What is you, the source of that question? <laughs> <laughs> you, you said that. What about if you don't feel you have your path to God and you can only imitate like other great people okay. and try to make that your path. I mean, so, you don't know what to do. Outside. First of all, as an example, I told you, I didn't chose to say one was praying shacharit, one was davening mincha, one was, I said, walking in circles in shul. Yeah. No, we're not talking about the mitzvot themselves. We're talking about the way to connect yourself to the Torah and mitzvot. Not to keep Torah and mitzvot or not to keep Torah and mitzvot. We're talking about a person that wants to keep Torah and mitzvot, and while he's keeping Torah and mitzvot, he needs to feel a connection to the Creator through the Torah and mitzvot. If you, don't. if you don't, so you have someone to talk to about it. And that's exactly what we said before. So that if you have those layers, you need to try to reach to the inner layer, to what that is beyond those Torah and mitzvot. What is beyond the Torah and mitzvot? The one that gave the Torah and mitzvot. And we can find ourselves many, many times in situations that we don't know which, which way, which direction to, to choose. And not because that we are questioning on Torah and mitzvot or asking, should I keep it or shouldn't I keep it? I want to keep it, but I don't know how to. Should I learn Torah right now? Or maybe I should go and bring money for, to, to support my family. Maybe I need now to go and do some other things. And, and it's all mitzvot. It's to help my wife. It's to help a friend in need. It's to put my head to sleep for an hour because I know that tomorrow I have a very long day. So I also need to rest. I need to feed my body somehow to relax my body. What I'm going to do then if I will be tired? Okay, so yesterday I learned and today I can't function. I can't take my kids. I can't go to work. I can't go learn. I can't go to shul, I can't do anything. So what's the use of that one hour learning yesterday if it destroyed my tomorrow? So that's the question that the person finds himself asking. The only way to find the Creator is if you want to find the Creator. So Your will is an inner thing that you have, and with that will, you're going to find the Creator Himself, the one that is beyond the physicality. You're going to find Him inside the water. It's not the water. It's the source of life that gives life to the water. It's not the verses themselves of the Torah. Also, another religion can take those verses and bend them and twist them and use them for other things that will reject the person from purity and will take the person to hell to darkness, to sadness, to frustration, to, 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 to be upset and lost and confused. And they use the same verses. And what are you going to do about that? They're going to claim, no, it's the same Bible, what do you want? It's not an argument at all. When your heart is aimed to Hashem, 
while using your heart, trying to find the connection, the spiritual connection of your soul, to find the light of your soul and to express it while serving Hashem Yidbarach. When you're going to do that, you're going to find what that is beyond what that's written inside that Torah or Mitzvot means. You will experience the light of the white fire through and between the lines of the dark file that it's the constricted and dark letters of the Torah that are not dark, are just constricting inside of them, containing the light of Hashem Barach in a very, very pressed way. The light of the color black and the color white are both the same. They contain all of the colors just when it's dark so all of the colors are over there one layer on top of the other stable standing still and then you cannot see no color because of the thickness of the colors but when you put all of those colors in a circle and you circle them you move them around very very fast so then it becomes white how do you know it's the same holiness or BS? What? How do you know if you're finding holiness or BS? Like pseudo What's the source of that question? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, should I really tell you? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. No, it's not. Maybe after the class? No, it's nothing. Exactly. So I'll tell you something about what it yeah, just asked. That when a person is searching for his satisfying his own desires, his own lusts, he can imagine, compare to himself, that he's serving Hashem. There are many, many liars that will tell you, follow me, I'm serving the Creator, follow me. But those people are not really serving the Creator. They're serving themselves. That's the only thing that they do. And this is why, if you're going to listen to their advice, you will be misled, misled. You won't find the answer in the end. You will just find yourself lost and confused. A person, it's very hard to know the answer about other people. Where are they really holding? But about yourself, it's not hard to know and to find. Why? Because when a person is having a dialogue inside of himself, he is talking to himself and he's asking himself so he can find the answer inside. It's not a huge mission. It's not a hard thing to do. Every one of us, if now I'm going to ask you your name and let's say that your name is Sam and I'm going to ask you, your name is Danny, you will know the truth if you're Danny or not, if you're Sam or not. You know the truth. If I'm going to ask you, have you read that book? Maybe you want to say yes, even though that you haven't. But inside, you know the truth. You know that you haven't read that book. And you can also say, I don't remember. I might have, but I don't remember. That's the truth. When someone is asking you the truth, a question, you inside have those tools to define between the truth to a lie. You have it. It's installed inside your program. You are much more sophisticated than an iPhone 7. I promise you. <laughs> you inside, you're a genius. Hashem okay, made I'm you. Saying, One no. second. Before everyone will understand the first question, we cannot move to the second. So, the thing is that inside of you, God created each and every one of us with the tools to find the truth. The verse is saying, Ha'emet, Divrei Emet, Nikarim. Words of truth are being recognized, can be recognized. When you hear a word of truth, you can recognize it. You can sense that it's the truth. So, when you are going through those conversations, dialogues with yourself, inside of yourself, if you choose to lie to yourself, it's your own tough luck. That's what you chose to yourself. And a person can lie to himself for years ignoring his inner feelings and betraying himself and cheating himself and rebuking himself, insulting himself and, and shaming himself and destroying himself finally. Mm -hmm. But a person that will choose the, choose the truth will reach the truth even if he started very, very far from it. Why? 
Because even if someone will ask you, who are you? And your answer on that, the honest answer will be to say, I'm a liar. So you said the truth and it's amazing. And it's already enough that Hashem will be there with you when you're a liar. Why? Because you admit that you said, I'm a liar. I'm a liar. I'm too tired. I don't have that desire. I don't feel like it. I don't want it. I don't understand it. I couldn't care less about it. If that's your truth, and that's what you really feel, if you will open a conversation, a vlog with Hashem, talking to Him about it, tell Him, listen Hashem, I feel that I don't want to do that. And I don't understand it. But it's not that I really don't want to do that. Just it's too hard for me to understand. Why should I do that? Please, can you explain me? Can you help me to understand? Because me, I'm a stubborn person, Hashem. I cannot do things if I'm not happy to do them. For me, it's too hard to follow other people. I don't want, I don't feel that you're waiting over there in the other side of the river. So why that I'm going to cross that crazy river? The water is too strong, this is too stream, too, too wavy, too, too, too high, too frightening for me. Hashem, I don't feel like I'm able to do that. So please, can you help me? Can you give me a hand? If you're going to express your thoughts, your feelings, with an honest power of speech that you have inside of you, those will be the prayers that have been answered. Because when Hashem hears the voice of truth, He is coming to this world. Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. So if you're going to call Him with truth, if you're really going to seek for Hashem, really going to yearn to find Hashem, even if you will be the lost, lost, most lost person in the world, the most confused person in the world, with the biggest and strongest desires, and, and the worst confusions in the world, and, and, and terrified, and after trauma, and, 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 and wish you would be dead and, and don't want to leave at all. But really from that point of despair, you're going to say to Hashem, I need your help. If you're just going to do that, Hashem will help you. And He will not going to take you in one moment from that side of the world to the other. He will give you an opportunity to make another step to climb another layer, another level, another floor, out from the filth toward purity, holiness, kdusha, vetara, happiness, feeling love and loved of, from Hashem and, and close to Hashem. All of those things depend in your honesty, in the purity of your intentions, means your real meaning. What really you want to achieve from life? What really you want to do in life? If you really don't want to do anything, so say to Hashem, Hashem, I don't want. Be honest, be strong enough, be a strong person. Say to Hashem, Barach, look, you are the God of truth, right? Hashem Elokechem Emet. You're the God of truth. And me, I don't have the power for all of that mess. I don't want to do that. I don't feel like it. Is that type of person better than someone who follows blindly without questioning? I'll tell you. The Gemara in Masechet Betza is saying, and I'm not bringing it into every class that I'm teaching, but my students will tell you that I'm quoting that verse in every class, but I'm not. You asked it. Amar Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak. Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak said, Gemara Masechet Betza, G'dola avera lishma mi mitzvah shelo lishma. When a person is sinning for Hashem, it's greater than a person that is keeping Torah mitzvot for another reason. You mean doing a very lachas to make Hashem angry? No, to do it for Hashem. There was one person. What, what, what a sin for Hashem? For an example, a sin for Hashem. For an example, can be that a couple they are married, and she doesn't want to keep Shabbat, and he is a bal tshuva, and he decided now to start keeping Shabbat in the middle of their life together, and she is telling him, listen. I'm driving in Shabbat. I couldn't care less about your nonsense. Because she doesn't understand what he's talking to her about. And he's sending her to the mikveh, and he wants her to cut her fingernails, and he wants her to cut her, cover her head. And like, he's the most sickest person she ever met in her life. That's not the one that she got married with three years ago. Like, it's a totally different person. Great. So now, he is finding himself in a huge conflict, in a crazy situation. Like, 
his rabbis for sure is about to kill him if he will drive to shul in Shabbat, but it's at least 45 minutes walk. He lives in, in Cleveland, in, in Vancouver. I don't know where he lives. And then he needs to walk for 45 minutes to shul. He's not going to do that, especially not in the rain, especially not in the winter. What he's supposed to do? So, I will say that that person doesn't know what to do with himself. And he tried to ask his rabbi, and he found a very... I thought the wife was trying to... Yes, and he, he wants to keep Shabbat, and he doesn't know what to do. His wife, she wants to violate Shabbat. She doesn't care about Shabbat. She never felt the taste of Shabbat. She was not going to those classes that he went. She didn't hear all of those conversations. She doesn't come from a, 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 a traditional house. She never experienced all of those things. She is from a different world. She is 100% secular, and she couldn't care less about Judaism. And now he wants, but she's Jewish. And he wants to keep Shabbat, and he wants to go back to his roots. And he finds himself in a conflict, in a very hard situation. And he called his rabbi. He tried to do everything by the book, and he called his rabbi. And his rabbi told him, you must divorce her. She's a stubborn woman. She's a refusing woman. You need to divorce her. I think that there are maybe 2,000 phone calls like that in a week, only in New York of uh, rabbis that are answering husbands that have issues with their wives. You must divorce them. The easiest answer in the world. Many, many answers like that. Okay, now what are you going to do with that crazy answer? He doesn't want to divorce her. He loves her. And he understands that she does not understand what did he understand. He's got mercy and love and patience and he wants to work with her. And he doesn't want to push her. He's a fantastic, amazing husband that wants to help his wife. And his wife now, she is refusing. She doesn't want to hear about it. Now, what should he do? He doesn't know. He called one rabbi, he called another rabbi, a third rabbi told him, you need to go and do six hours, it would do to go to Abin Ahmad. <laughs> he doesn't know what to do. No, I, 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 no it wasn't me. <laughs> I was calling the rabbi. I was the one that was calling. Hello, rabbis. Now the rabbi is calling. Okay, let's change the topic. Let's change the topic. The troopers came. The, the, secret, the secret police of the Haredi world came. We need to change our topic. Okay, so now what that person is supposed to do so I will tell you that I'm now not going to answer the halachic answer of that case, of that situation. Let's try to stay focused. But what does that have to do with the I'll answer one second. I'll explain to you. So now, first of all, in that situation... in addition to the question that I asked. In now, in that situation now, I'll try to explain and to come back. That person now is standing in a conflict, in a very hard situation. Now, what he supposed to do, he doesn't know. So he, and I'm not saying that that is the right way. I'm not saying that that's the halachic answer and that's what he should do. But I'm saying that that confused husband doesn't know what to do with himself. He feels lost, he feels confused, he doesn't know what to do, and he now is choosing to drive in Shabbat for his wife, and he is apologizing to Hashem, and he will say to Hashem, listen Hashem, I'm sorry, I don't want to violate Shabbat, I don't want to do that, and he will feel sorrow while driving every Shabbat that he will drive, and he is doing it to keep his wife close to him, and slowly, slowly to help her, to bring her to the right path. I'm that not saying. Be my sinning for one time. second, I will answer you. I want to help you. I'll answer you. Give me a chance. Thank you. So when he will drive like that in Shabbat, it means to sin for Hashem. On that, Rav Nachman Baritzchak said that sometimes. It's greater to sin for Hashem than to keep Torah mitzvot for another reason. Now he, the same husband, let's say, a different one, in a different case, he is afraid to tell his father that his wife, she is not keeping Shabbat. 
It's a Froome family in Boro Park, and his wife, she's a Bala Tshuva, and she lost his ma- her mind, and she's freaking out, and he doesn't know what to do, and his father is Hasid Satmer, and all of the community, and they're going to talk, and what he's going to do. And now he wants to keep Torah and Mitzvot, and he's doing it not because that he loves Hashem, He's doing it only because that he's afraid from his father. He's afraid from the rabbis. He's afraid from their community. So now he will keep and he will fight with her and he will divorce her and gonna throw her to the streets and she's gonna find herself and rumors and everyone gonna talk and she will move to Monsi and then she will try to move to another place and she will lose her mind and the kids will lose their minds. Why? Because he, the husband, he kept Torah and Mitzvot, but not for Hashem. He did it because of his fear from his father. The problem is that I'm not afraid of his father, and I'm not working for the community, and not for the rabbis, and none of you are also not employees of no community and no system. We came down to this world alone, and we will be judged alone in judgment day and the creator that created you sent you to this world with a mission we're not going away from Torah and Mitzvot we're just trying to find the right way how really to keep Torah and Mitzvot with a heart with passion with happiness with joy and not as robots not as droids because that's not what that we are we have a heart to fill with we have a mind to think with we have emotions we have senses we have amazing <coughs> wisdom that god planted inside of us talents powers imagination dreams goals desires that might be holy desires and we must use them all of those treasures all of those talents all of those abilities, all of that wisdom that's been planted inside of us are the tools that we must use while serving Hashem. Because if you're just going to function by the book, like what the book said, you will never going to find your true self inside <coughs> of your life. You're not going to be alive. And that is bringing us back to the first question that I've been asked in the beginning of that amazing investigation. (laughs) What is the topic of today's class? That was the first question. That we need to find the way how to live our life while keeping the home it's about. Because God told us, Hashem told us that we need to choose life. And he told us that this Torah is Torah Tchaim, Torah that's supposed to give life to the person that keeps it, that follow the rules of the Torah. So if you find yourself that you follow the rules of the Torah and you feel dead and you feel sad and you feel upset and you feel lost and you feel confused and you feel that you're going in the wrong way, so why won't you start Listen to your inner voice that is telling you that you're going in the wrong direction. And it doesn't mean that you need to stop keeping Shabbat. Try to make something else from Shabbat. Try to keep Shabbat in a way that you will feel connected to that Shabbat. If the songs that are written in this Mironim of Shabbat, you don't understand even what it says, so how can it be that you will be supposed you will supposed to sing those songs? I don't understand the meaning of those songs. If to sing another song in the Shabbos table will make your family happy, it doesn't it sounds more logic for you really to be happy in Shabbat than just to quote and read from certain books. You won't to learn what's written in those books. You want to learn those songs that are written in this Mironim of Shabbat? Great! Learn! Find songs that your family will like 
and sing it with them. No, you want to sing the ancient version of the song that no one in the table can relate to. No one even understand the tune. You yourself don't remember so many parts. The words for sure are wrong. And you are upset. Why your wife? She doesn't care about your noise that you're making in Shabbos. And why your kids doesn't want to sit with you on the table. It's not fun and you yourself even not enjoying that you just choose to imagine that it's fun but really you are really not enjoying that Shabbos table also no, not so not it's not that. I was not answering you before I answered you now now I'm just looking for <laughs> an answer to a question of another person once after a class that I gave so after that class maybe 15 people came to me and they told me I felt in that class that you were talking straight to me exactly to me all of your words answered all of my questions and they start hearing each other and like they're wondering how can it be and they're asking me were you talking to me and I say yes of course and then the other person is saying were you talking to me and I say yes of course and the answer is yes of course and it doesn't mean that I have divine spirit and Ruach HaKodesh that I can hear your thoughts and I am answering no I'm not like that I'm not psychic maybe psychotic but not <laughs> psychic I'm just connecting myself that was the answer of that guy that ran away he left, he left. okay but that's a, another part and addition this will be told he will you you will tell oh, him so that's an answer for him the mouth of hashem is talking to you not because that it's an angel that rabbi that is talking to you he's not an angel his wife will testify that he's not an <laughs> angel his children will testify that he's not an angel he is a regular human being, just that he is connecting himself to Hashem. And he just wants Hashem to reveal his kindness to his people. So he is trying, that pe person, that, that rabbi, to nullify himself as, as much as he can and to let Hashem speak and to answer to all of the questions of all of those souls that are desiring and waiting to find an answer to their questions. And this is how all of the people can be answered, even that I'm not a genius, and I'm not a genius. And all of my teachers will testify on that, and my rabbis will testify, I'm not a genius. I just have a very strong desire to help. And I was teaching before I learned. Before I learned, I was teaching. I was coming to Yeshiva and I was sitting with people and people would come, new people, and I am a Baal Shuva. When I started my Shuva, I didn't know the meaning of the word Mishnah. I didn't know what is Mishnah. I didn't know which books are written in the Torah, what is Nevi'im, what is... I didn't know anything. I didn't know the Alachot. I didn't know anything. I never kept Shabbat in my life until I started to do Shuva. I was eating in Yom Kippur, I was eating treif, everything I was doing. I was violating every rules of the Torah. I couldn't care less about the Torah. It wasn't on my table, my plate, my agenda at all, at all. It was a joke for me. But I really wanted the truth, and Hashem revealed Himself to me. And now when I'm thinking about it, and I see that Hashem Barach helped me so much, even that I was so far from Him, I understand from that that the same opportunity is open for everyone. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't chose me because that I was so righteous and so I wasn't. I was dancing in clubs and in, in, in discotheques. I, I was I was I was drinking tequila and <laughs> whatever. Yeah, was tequila. I didn't say just the <laughs> amounts were a little <laughs> exaggerated. <laughs> <laughs> and to drive home like that oh, yeah. Shabbos morning, 10 a.m. after oh, yeah. party, so it's kind of an issue with the tequila. <laughs> the tequila true. itself becomes problematic. Stop. It's okay. true. You don't realize how wrong things are. Yeah, because, you're, because you drank too much tequila. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly. So when you realize that Hashem just reveals His kindness to us, on all of us, and opening for all of us the opportunity to sense Him and to feel Him and to understand his existence so 
it's it's bringing you to the next step the next step is to go and to share and to let everyone know that they have that inner connection to the creator and it's an inner thing it's inside you don't need to be religious to be connected to Hashem just the those water are connected to Hashem it's like the source of life of, of you as a person as a creation is Hashem Hashem is reviving you I quoted once uh, in, 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 in class a righteous man that said, Bala Sulam Akadosh, he said that to explain to a person the existence of the Creator, it's like to explain to a fish on the existence of water. A fish is eating from the water, he's drinking from the water, he's, he's breathing through the water, he's leaning and all of his stability and his movement, everything based on water, and try to explain to him that there is water. He's ignoring the water in 100% of his life. He's desiring the food and the oxygen. And like, he's got full of thoughts. Every, he's thinking about everything else except of the water. There is only one way to explain to him the existence of water. To take him out of the water tank. And then he will want the water. That's the only way he will understand that he was in the water. When you will take him out. That's what Hashem done with us. To create the world means to separate us from Him and then we're desiring Him back. So to work on your desire for Hashem, on your will to Hashem, it's to understand and to complete the purpose of our creation, of your creation. So one person will desire to feel Hashem through music and one, one through learning and one through Hidbodedut and one through swimming and one through sports and one through whatever. And you need to follow your heart and to connect yourself through your inside, through your holy desires, your talents, your gifts, your power, your shape. How did God made you? Because everyone got a different channel. Everyone got a different link. Everyone got a different connection. And you cannot connect yourself to Hashem through mine. You can connect yourself only through yours. And you must do that in your own unique, special, individual way. That it's who that you are. And you must find your way in Avodat Hashem. And that's it. So thank you very much. And Hashem will bless you and will answer all of your prayers. And I bless you from the bottom of my heart that you will understand how precious and cute and amazing and special you all are. Because you're handmade of Hashem. Hashem made you exactly like you are. You are 100% designed and created by the Creator. He made you to be exactly who that you are. So understand your importance. Understand how crazy great you are and just follow your heart and find the shaman barah thank you very much thank you. thank you in this world in this period of time we have a mission what's the mission the mission is only not to forget the creator to remember that it's all he never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings of all of those husks, husks.